The long-awaited launch of Scorched Earth is finally here, and it brought with it a brand new DLC pack that is optional. You don't actually have to buy Scorch, but this is like an extra kind of expansion pack on the side that adds a ton of new stuff, and we're going to be checking out all of that stuff here in this video. Um, guys, go ahead, do me a favor, hit the like button if you enjoy this one, and real quick, let me show you something that's not included in the pack, but is really cool. They added... A, a full-on ghillie suit skin for for Scorch. This is like the desert ghillie suit skin. It's an actual skin that goes on top of a normal ghillie suit. So you, obviously, if you've already got some really good ghillie armor, then you can just add this on top. And I gotta say, I absolutely love that. I really hope they continue to do that. Um, it's got like a full-on piece of cactus and everything on it. It looks really, really cool. But um, yeah, not a main focus of this video. I want to show you everything new in the Bob's Tall Tales. And starting with all of these skins right here, which I was thinking, you know what? Kind of makes sense to put them onto these training dummies, but I can see that there's already some weird uh, glitching in terms of the actual fabric uh, sticking through the body of the training dummy. So let me actually pop this armor on instead and show you that way. Okay, so this set is the drifter skins, and let me actually show you with uh, the hat shown. So yeah, this is the full-on drifter skin set. I think it looks amazing, actually. I think it looks really, really cool. Um, yeah, and obviously, you know, some of the fabrics and stuff actually move around as you walk and everything. I do kind of prefer... Oh, <laughs> I didn't mean to hit that. I do kind of prefer actually having my hair out, but, you know, that hat actually looks pretty cool as well. So, that is the Drifter skin set. Let me move on to, I think, this one here. What is this one called again? The Outlaw set. All right, let's pop that set on. So, here we go. Here I am, and a little bit more mysterious right here. Yeah, I like that, actually. I... I I probably prefer the hat on this one, maybe with like the uh, the main kind of body of the Drifter one as well. But yeah, this one's pretty cool as well. Obviously, you can mix them, match them, and everything. You don't you're not like set on having to you know have the exact same full set um, if you want to have like different pieces. But um, yeah, really cool looking actually. I like the hat a lot and the the little um what do you call it the little bandana as well. Let's uh let's pop this on as well. This is the rancher hat. I'll just throw this one on real quick and we'll just kind of check them out. So that's what that one looks like. A little bit more kind of uh I don't know. I'm getting like different vibes from that one. I like that one a lot actually. Let's pop on this one next. So this is the bowler hat. Let's see. Let's pop that one on. Nah. Not a big fan. And then we've got which one is this? This is the sinister hat. So let's pop that one on as well. And pretty cool as well. I, I like it. I got I've got some good vibes out of this one. Pretty cool. All right. Anyway, so that is all of the new skins. Um, let me actually pop on this piece then instead. Let's like mix them and match them. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, because we got the green and we got the green. I, I like it. All right. Let me actually go ahead and hide that because we've also got some new emotes as well. I've already got this one keyed, but let me show you both of these. So this is the brow wipe right here. So, yeah, pretty, pretty cool. Nice little thing. But then this one here is my favorite. This is the showdown one. <laughs> Wait for it. Boom. Yes, I got you. Nice. Yeah, I like that one a lot. Obviously, it works pretty well if you actually have a gun as well. It's a little bit goofy in terms of the, um, the bit where you blow the smoke because you're blowing it directly into the barrel. But, yeah, or not into the barrel, but you know what I mean. Um, not, uh, not as solid as the other one, but, yeah. Anyway, moving on, we've got a couple new structures here as well. I, this is one that I really cannot figure out properly. This is the wood scaffold, and um, I thought it would, like, add, like, foundation support or something, but realistically what it is is it's just kind of a wall that you can see through. Um, I don't see any other kind of uses for this. Like, it acts exactly like a wall. Um, obviously, you need foundation support to place it and everything. You know, everything about it is just a wall. Um, except, obviously, you know, it's it's the scaffolding instead. It's got 10,000 health, which is pretty much in line with, like, wooden walls. So, yeah, I don't know. It's um, just in case you wanted to have this instead of, like, a full-on wooden wall somewhere, you could do that. Obviously, if you were going to be building your train station or something, maybe underneath, this would be a lot nicer than having a bunch of walls and pillars going down instead. Um, yeah, it's it's a bit of a vibe. I like it for sure. Next up, we've got the coffin, which I, I love. This is great. So it actually, you can open it up, of course, but it also acts as a bed as well as obviously a fast travel point. Um, and then you can actually, you can get into it first of all. Here, let me show you. Hang on. Uh, let's see. Lay in coffin. There we go. I'm, I'm in the coffin. I'm having a little sleep, so you could log out in there, obviously. But you can actually also capture your player and put their, uh, their the skin into there as well. And obviously, you could dress them if you wanted to as well. So let's put some boots on and a hat. And that's all I need. 
<laughs> nice. Uh, the one thing that is a little bit weird is when you close it, the arms do stick through. So hopefully they'll end the feed as well. So hopefully they'll fix that at some stage soon. And you can obviously have it uh, facing downwards like this. When you're placing it, you can just hit R. And it's one of the structure variants that you can place it down on the ground like this. It works the exact same, obviously. I can put another syntax in there as well. We can have so many dead syntax absolutely everywhere. And we can shoot them in the face, which no blood. Okay, cool. Anyway, we've got a bunch of new um, little pieces of furniture here as well. Obviously, we've got the saloon table right here, which is pretty nice. A giant area, uh, perfect for poker, which we'll talk about in a couple minutes. Uh, we've also got three new chairs. So we've got the swivel stool, which you can actually spin on. And I'm going to let go of it now. So I've let go. And we slowly spin and to right to a stop right there. Um, <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. I like that. I don't know. I don't know why. It's just, it's so simple, but you can actually spin on it, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, we've got the fancy armchair right here as well, which is pretty nice. Uh, and then we also have the saloon chair right here as well, which is also pretty cool. And then we've got the, um, the little full-on uh, sofa back here. You can actually lay down on this or you can sit down. So I'll just sit down. There we go. And then we can also lay down as well. Oh, ooh, I accidentally popped straight out of it. There we go. Nice. So, yeah, pretty cool. I like that. It's, uh, you know, it's just chairs, realistically. Um, chairs aren't that useful in Ark, unless you're underwater and you need stamina. Uh, that's about it. But, you know, I, I don't know. I kind of like just having extra stuff to be, um, you know, decorating my base with and everything. And, and, yeah, a lot of this stuff is just mostly decoration. So here's something cool. We have these shootable bottles, and I got to just zoom in to show you the names on these things. They're kind of hard to read if you don't spyglass them. So we've got Northern Comfort Island Whiskey. We've got Scorched Gut Whiskey. We have, this is my favorite, Tickle Chicken Fine Spirits. That's absolutely fantastic. And then we've got Wild Dodo. Now, with these things, you can, of course, uh, shoot them and they will explode. And then, you know, if you wanted to make like a little bit of a mini game around your base or just hide a bunch of bottles somewhere and get your friends to like find them all and shoot them all, uh, you can do that. But here's the cool part. And hopefully they'll pop up in just one second so I can show you and not act crazy. They will reappear any second now i don't exactly know how much time has there we go here's the only issue right and as you can see they didn't come back is that exactly what they were before so now we're stuck with uh two of the what is that the dodo one right there it's a little bit easier to read now i think the lighting earlier was like much harder to read in but yeah you can actually see what it says there so they come back randomly as like a different one which i'm not a big fan of i, I gotta say if i'm decorating my base with all this stuff i want you know these blue bottles to be here and if people start shooting them, they're going to come back as something different. Like that one just did again. Um, it's pretty cool, though. I like it. Definitely a nice little thing. You know, it's nothing major, but it's it's pretty cool just to have these things um, as like little like mini game type things that you could probably do with your friends or something like that. I don't know. I like it. Obviously, this table as well actually has snap points on it. Uh, I couldn't place one here probably because of the terrain, but there are eight snap points around the whole table as well. Oh, they all came back as this one. Can I punch them? I can. Oh, cool. Nice. Cool. All right. Anyway, so moving on, um, we have one thing that I could not figure out properly. This is the this is the pot, uh, the plant pot. And um, from what I understand, it's supposed to be a crop plot, except obviously it looks different. Although I can access this inventory and put seeds in. And I've tried to have seeds in my inventory and everything. Um, nothing really seems to work with it. So it might be bugged right now. So maybe circle back to this, but I would imagine it just is exactly like a normal crop plot. Um, obviously, it's just, you know, a different kind of aesthetic. And I got to say, I like that a lot. I like the idea of actually having, um, you know, just like proper plant pots instead of these crop plots everywhere. You could just decorate your base a little bit differently. And I like that a lot. Um, but yeah, obviously, it's not working or something. I don't really know, to be honest. Um, it's very confusing. Next up, we've got the town bell. And let me show you the description on this, because this is another thing I couldn't get to work properly. Um... A bell that makes loud noise when rung uh, or a quiet noise when hit. So you can actually punch it or shoot it, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then can also be used to uh, make nearby uh, tames defend the area aggressively. That's one thing that I couldn't get it to do. Um, so first of all, you can shoot it. And boom, it's going to make the, the bell ringing sound. You can also punch it as well. Probably hit it with a dino. Uh, you could just manually ring it as well. You get like the full swing on it, which is cool. Um, and then you can do this, sound the alarm, which I think lasts for about a minute, but it's really like, 
I'm not I'm not gonna leave that ringing the whole time because that's super annoying now I think this is supposed to be able to set your teams to aggressive but it doesn't seem to want to do it and I'll show you the range on it it's it's pretty significant like that's full-on base range but it doesn't really seem to set my teams onto aggressive at all they are actually on passive right now uh so I don't really know how that works maybe there's something else to it that I'm not getting but I'm gonna pick that up because I don't want to have to listen to that forever. Uh, next up, we've got uh, the piano, but also right here we have these little hanging signs with a very important message on it right there. Wonder what that means. Hmm. Maybe you could decipher it down below. And also, we've got another message over here. Huh. Interesting. Um, <laughs> these can obviously be hung from uh, ceilings, or obviously this is actually the wooden beam which is technically it's like a pillar and they added a skinny version that went vertical but now they've added the horizontal version as well and that's what I have it on right there so they can hang on anything that uh, has like the sort of like ceiling support and obviously it shows the exact same thing on both sides you know right there and right there cool just don't hit that too many times you got to hit it once and then that's it anyway um on top of that we have the piano which I love I, I absolutely love this this is great Okay, you're going to love this as well. Let me hit R to go into the menu. What we have right here is every single soundtrack for ARK. And you can have them playing from here. So let's play this one. And then, boom, you can actually see these, like, little musical notes popping out as well. We can hop off. And we've got a full-on range of this in our bass. So, yeah, you could just have your piano playing tunes for you all day which is great um obviously you can have it shuffled through or just go through the whole album and everything so you know let's skip to the next track um yeah you can just have it go through absolutely everything you can have it repeat the music you can turn down the volume and obviously change the range on it as well pretty cool i love this it's such a cool thing to add you know i never would have thought something like this would be something that arc needed but yeah no i love that i absolutely love that so much um next up We've got a couple different types of storage. So right here, these are the barrels. And let me actually demonstrate by picking one of them up. So with the barrels, let me see where exactly is it? There it is right at the top. When you place them down, they can snap to each other as well. When you place them down, they are opened for five minutes and they can't be closed for that full five minutes. So once five minutes passes, you get to this stage where you can actually seal the barrel. So you want to put all your loot or whatever in here, and then you can actually seal the barrel. And then obviously that's closed. Uh, nobody can access it. I can't even access it. The only way to open it again is to unseal it. And obviously you got to hold down and boom now we've got it unsealed and we can collect our very precious treasure right here but um yeah so it's got 40 slots it's got a thousand health on it so not amazing it could easily be broken but i don't know just as like a nice little uh storage chest that can be locked after five minutes even from your own tribe um yeah i don't know i kind of like that stuff although it's probably possible to do that with other storage chests but yeah i don't know it's pretty cool i like it just aesthetics wise really nice looking as well uh we also got another little storage chest in this update that's got something pretty interesting with it so this is the treasure chest and of course you want to keep your very good treasures inside of there if you get the shovel which is a new item um you can actually bury your treasure chest and right there you see we can see where it is but we've also gotten this little uh, map here somewhere. I've got a lot of crap in my inventory right there. It can actually show you where the treasure is buried. So if you wanted to maybe like, I don't know, like give somebody something, you could essentially go ahead and just bury some treasure somewhere and then give them the map. And then they got to go looking for it. Obviously, I can see it because I buried it myself. And I think, yeah, you can see right there. It says it will be revealed in 13 days and uh 23 hours so basically 14 days is as long as this berry this buried treasure can actually stay in the ground and after that amount of time i would imagine that it probably pops up out of the ground obviously i'm not going to wait 14 days to show you but that's probably what it is we can obviously dig it back up as well which is pretty cool and right there yeah we've got our treasure amazing another thing we can do with the shovel is we can actually go ahead and just create water out of the ground which is nice so yeah that's that's something similar to what they had in atlas which is another game that the studio has created um but yeah so we've got like 200 water there we can drink some i can't drink any because i'm in creative mode but you know what i mean um and then that water actually depletes over time so you can't constantly do that like i can't create more water here as well because all that water is right there and once that depletes we're gonna have to wait a little while before more water can actually be scooped up out of the ground just like that so yeah i don't know i think that this stuff is really nice um obviously the shovel has a couple more uses i think you might be able to just find treasure 
around the place but i haven't actually been able to find any i don't know if we can find like maps and stuff like that i can still hear the water but i don't see it anymore interesting where did it go uh there it is i guess it's bugged out or something this is i believe it's called the frontier lamp yeah here it is actually so i've got on my hot bar we've got four variants of this so we've got the lamp post we got the oil lamp right there we've got the wall lamp let's place down another one and then we've got the chandelier which can be placed in the middle or really anywhere else that you want to uh let me actually make it nighttime real quick so let me just turn on all these things then they take oil obviously to light up and boom there we go uh, although I think they're also getting, yeah, they're actually getting powered from my, um, I have a wind turbine right there. So they're actually getting powered as well, but you can put oil in them to make them light up and everything. We've got a little visitor over here. Let me just get rid of you real quick, buddy. There we go. So yeah, I really like the aesthetic of this one and the chandelier, I guess, as well. Um, this one right here is pretty cool. I don't know. I like this stuff. It's just nice little extra things that we can have around our base. And um, yeah, the fact that they actually get powered by that as well, which is, that's pretty cool. I like that. I actually didn't know that just until now. Uh, another thing that we have that I can show you over here is let me make a data so right here we've got the drawing paper and i thought initially it was just a little canvas but you can actually stretch it out to a custom size it seems to go a little bit slightly taller or wider than two foundations so like two by one it doesn't really seem to want to go any bigger than these sizes right here so that's kind of like the max size you can make now obviously you can make a massive grid of them and have like a massive canvas of like custom paintings and everything to create like a big uh picture of me or something um <laughs> you know you, you could do that or you can obviously go ahead and just paint stuff for yourself like this right here um yeah you can just paint that or you know download your images and, and put them into these files and do all that stuff but that's a lot of effort um i do think it's pretty cool though that you can actually make custom sizes for it i just don't really know how that works when you're trying to like download your own paintings because uh, normally with the canvases like they're like a set size so how does it work when we're putting our own images into arc i, I don't really know maybe you can't with these things I, I actually haven't tested it just yet but um yeah so you can see they can kind of like overlap and everything if you want them to um i don't know you could also create a secret door right here because you can actually walk right through them so maybe somebody could create like a doorway painting and then just you know or sorry a wall painting and then you know when you walk up to this it looks like a wall visually but no it's actually a secret doorway and you've got all your galley mimus eggs back here or something i don't know <laughs> yeah i think it's nice it's it's just a little bit of extra creativity in the game um yeah i like that you could probably stretch this over a billboard or something actually as well now next up is something that i would love to be able to show you properly but i can't and the reason is because I've got no friends um this is the poker uh table and this is what it would look like if you were actually playing but when you place it obviously none of that's there uh so you can actually sit down and play full-on poker in arc which i think is great i want more of this kind of stuff in arc i think it would be really fun uh you can have like tour tournament style um and you can obviously like put like wagers down and everything uh or you can have like the sit down and go one and you can have like a buy-in kind of item so let's say i don't know it's gonna cost uh 21 barrels no one barrel i guess uh so you can essentially make uh, the rules up yourself here uh so let's say a barrel is buy-in and that's going to uh give you um oh i have 22 of them so a, one barrel would give me 20 or sorry 200 chips wait no that's 10 okay yeah because minimum okay yeah there's a lot of different settings here i'm not really reading them too well right now but um yeah so you can like make your own rules and everything here so let's see let me properly set this up then so let's say it's gonna cost uh let's put 100 bullets in there or one bullet i suppose so one bullet is going to be so let's make the minimum one bullet to buy in and then the conversion rate let's make that let's make that 10 so we should get uh 10 times the chips let's see so if we do one bullet we're gonna get 10 chips or if i have 100 bullets i'm gonna get a thousand and yeah we could basically buy in and play obviously i i would need somebody else here with me to show you this um i will tell you in the future definitely we're gonna we're gonna get the boys together we're gonna have a poker night in arc some beers and everything we're gonna get it going it's gonna be really fun um but yeah obviously i can't really show you that right now by myself because it's not something that you can show by yourself uh, a couple more things here before we move on to some more exciting things right there. We've got the um, the windmill right here, which is just a normal, like, kind of 
looking windmill um, compared to this one right here, which is the normal uh, Scorched Earth one. They don't really do anything different. Uh, it's just a different aesthetic to it. They have this new like C4 trap thing. I've never noticed this before. You basically trap it with C4 and I've tried to blow it up, but it doesn't seem to do anything. So I think I'd need an enemy to try and interact with this. And then I guess it would blow them up or something. Don't really know. But um, yeah, you can actually see the range on this one is pretty significant. And I'll show you the range on this one as well. It's the exact same, pretty much. Obviously, they're slightly offset because um, they're beside each other and not inside of each other. But yeah, um, it doesn't have any advantage over the regular one. It's just a different looking aesthetic. And then right here, we've got the water reservoir, which can hold up to 100,000 water. And uh, yeah, it, it's obviously got a range as well. Let me show you. It's not as crazy um in terms of the actual range there but yeah it can hold up to a hundred thousand and it looks pretty nice i like it um yeah let's go ahead and hide that as well so obviously water's water's heavily changed in this game over the years so yeah this is definitely going to be really really useful and y you know that will fill up from rain or if you actually have uh water source nearby or something like that you could have it fill up from that as well but i think maybe just in general you might actually be able to be able to get away with this filling up from the rain because it's got such a high capacity um definitely really useful so yeah that's pretty much all it is in terms of like all of the actual structures and everything i almost forgot to show it off but there's also this new dynamite skin for the c4 remote and once we do that we will have little dynamite in our other hand. It doesn't change the C4 in any way. It literally just works the exact same. But obviously, yeah, you know, visually it looks like dynamite. A little bit cooler when you look at it, actually. I mean, it's, it's a lot cooler than C4 for sure. There are a couple more things I'll show you in a minute. Um, oh, something weird happened here. Oh, that was fully built up when I didn't crash. I crashed earlier and, and something happened to this. Uh, let me show you how the cart works. So first of all, if if you want to get the cart onto a saddle, you actually have a new like little uh, section for it right here. You actually have to place the saddle down and then you can place the cart onto the creature as well. You can see it pretty much just connects to the saddle. This will only pretty much work with creatures of this size. It's not going to work on a Rex, I don't think. Um, I actually haven't tested every single creature, but I do know Thyla's work, Equus work, uh, Parasaurs, uh, Iguanodons, and probably many more of that similar kind of size um in terms of what you can actually do with this thing let me grab some of these ceilings out i already actually had some on me um you can actually build out from it by just one in all of these directions right here and i did have that built up but i don't know what happened to it it seemed to have broken or something um very very strange don't really know why that happened uh i have noticed some like weird stuff in terms of the building on the back of this so sometimes i've been able to get like walls like there uh let me see if i can get one here as well i can get one there i'll just try and place as many as i can now you may think okay this is out of range i've gotten a wall there before i don't really understand the rules look i can place one there that doesn't make any logical sense uh and then maybe if i move the thyla we'll be able to actually place a wall as well um yeah let's see we definitely can't place them there let me just move you a little bit and then i'm gonna try this again <laughs> it's it's kind of goofy uh still not able to do it i don't really know it's very strange like i've been able to get walls or railings and all sorts in those areas but now for some reason i can't um and i guarantee if i got a completely different one and tried it again the the layout would be a little bit different so it seems to be kind of bugged out or something or maybe there's just other factors at play here that are messing it up in some way um but yeah obviously like i said i did have this one built oh it's actually back a little bit more okay i'm very confused what is happening here that was <laughs> i'm not going crazy right we were missing walls a couple minutes ago i think yeah we definitely were uh okay so right there i was not able to place a wall there earlier but now i am it's very very confusing let me try and build this one up a little bit more uh can i place one here now i can okay cool what about here i could i probably won't right now but um yeah you can see this is kind of like the 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 size that you could kind of build up at um you can't actually build any higher than two so you'd actually have to have it open topped if you did it like this so maybe the way to do it would be a quarter wall and then start sloping up because obviously this is a little bit too tall to have a roof on i think just being able to like build on the back of this and have like your storage and everything and speaking of let me actually show you that real quick so i'm gonna place down a storage chest i'm just gonna show you the weight on my thyla right now let's drop all of that so the thyla right now weighs uh 40 
and let me show you what happens when I add some stuff into here. So I'm going to add uh, 1200 weight into the storage chest and I'll show you that it actually only adds in just basically like slightly less than 800. So it, it pretty much takes away a third of the carry weight on whatever you have on top of the card. So pretty useful. Obviously, um, you know, if you're doing like a metal run or something like that, you could have like a weight dialer and you'd be able to like get your metal back really fast. Um, but yeah, you know, it's uh, it's pretty useful for sure. One thing I have noticed, let me uh, first of all, get rid of the sandstorm. Okay, the sandstorm's mostly gone. It's still way over there. It's really cool actually right now. Um, so one thing that I have noticed is you can actually jump with the cart. And on, on top of that, you can also climb like structures and, and walls and everything on the Thyla. I'm not sure if they thought about this. Uh, hang on, let me let me try and like climb up and not fly off the top. Uh, let's see. Ooh, I'm trying not to. It's just kind of like automatically doing it himself. Let me build that wall a little bit taller. So yeah, watch this. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if they thought about this. I don't know if they realized that we'd be able to do this, but yeah. Uh, and on top of that, you can also do this. You know, you can do your Thyla ambush with your cart. <laughs> it's just so stupid. I love it though. It's it's great. Um, I do like these carts. Don't get me wrong. Like I'm I'm happy that they put it on a Thyla, but that is so goofy. Um, I I seriously thought before testing it, I thought, oh, there's no way they they're gonna allow us to jump with them. But no, we actually are, which is great. I thought it might block the ability to jump, but obviously it doesn't. Wild card, I'm not giving you ideas. Please don't do that. But yeah, um, <laughs> just being able to climb with the Thyla is so fantastic. That might be patched. I, I think it could probably be patched because I feel like you could exploit some way with that. But um, yeah, <laughs> just just bear that in mind if you're watching this way past the date that it came out at. But um, yeah, that's the carts. Obviously, you can build absolutely whatever you want on here. Um, some things actually don't place. That, that was wrong of me to say. Let me show you. So I have noticed that you can't actually place vaults onto it. I did try to do this earlier, but it does not work at all. Um, it just won't allow me. But obviously, different storage chests and everything actually do work. Uh, dedicated storage does not work, though. But yeah, normal storage chest works. I would imagine the small one works. I can't. Yeah, there we go. And the barrel also works, but I'll place one of those down as well, just in case. So yeah, all that stuff works. You just can't have a vault on it, which, you know, I don't think is a big deal. Um, yeah, anyway. So that's pretty much it for all of that stuff. Let's move on to the trains. And for the trains, I was thinking, should I set something up first? But then I was thinking, no, I should probably not because you're going to need to see how you can actually do this. So first of all, if you want to start doing, you can see I've done some stuff over there. If you want to start uh, your train, you have to start out with some tracks. And now you can actually see we've got a couple different variations. And I'll just show you those real quick before we do anything else. So we have the single straight track. We have a, a two-way split. So obviously you can see it veers off to uh, either side. I think we can have it may maybe go on the other side there. Uh, no, I guess not. Can I make it split to the other way? Yeah, I guess you can't actually make it split off to the other side. That's a bit weird. I guess maybe you could just have it coming from the other way. I don't really know. That's the two-way split. We've got a two-way merge right here. And then we've got a three-way. Uh, <laughs> and then we've got a little short level. I'm not really sure what this one's super useful for. Maybe just kind of filling gaps. And then we've got the connector, which can actually connect uh, the end of one to the other if they don't line up. So don't worry if you if you start making your track around the whole world and then connect it back up. If you're kind of offset or whatever, you don't have to worry about that. You can use this piece to connect the two of them. So yeah, let me let me just kind of show you some of the stuff. I'll just start off with this. We'll just kind of place that down. I'm going to build it up. I'm not trying to rotate that. It's just kind of happening. There we go. So now you can see because we've got the end to the end, we've got these barriers that are obviously a thing from real life as well. Um, so yeah, we essentially got those. They just automatically get placed down. And from here, we can actually go in a couple different directions depending on where we're looking. So we can go left, right, up, or down. And then we can also go straight, which is a little bit harder for me to actually uh, get. There we go. I think that's straight. Yeah, kind of looks like it. It doesn't super look like it is. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a little bit kind of difficult to actually manage. Obviously, it's probably a little bit easier if you're doing it in survival mode and not being able to fly around and everything. But you can see we're actually able to like build up freely like that. Now, when we get to this stage where obviously you can see there's no more foundation support, we can just come here and then we can place down some pillars coming down from the end of that. And as you can see, that's going to extend it out by two more. Sorry, three more. My bad. 
Um, and then right here, we're going to have to do some more of those. Let's just do that right down to the bottom. So yeah, from here, like we could, we could go up if we wanted to, we can realistically kind of go wherever the hell we want. Um, it's really like, it's very freeing, you know, it, there's not a huge amount of like restrictions or anything on it. Um, yeah, you can see right there, like that's super crazy looking. Now, just imagine this on a larger scale around the whole map. Um, if you can stomach the resource costs, because they're actually really expensive. So the train itself is not super expensive, and that's kind of the get. You know, they get you in at the ground level with the train for, like, a pretty cheap-ish cost, considering. But then the tracks are what really cost. It's 200 metal, uh, 50 semantic paste, and 400 wood. That's really expensive. Uh, I'll show you the train. The train costs... Here it is. It is 600 semantic paste, 1,000 metal. Like, obviously, it's it's relatively expensive you know um but it's cheaper on the grand scheme of things because you're going to be spending most of your resources on the tracks themselves so i'll show you a couple of the other ones here we've got the um let's see let's do the three-way uh one let me flip that go that direction there uh we can see right here we've actually got this little like um this little thing right here to to decide where we wanted to go i thought maybe we could shoot at that and change the uh the track to like switch it to like left right or center or whatever but we actually have to do that while we're on the train which i'll show you in just one minute let me just switch it back to this i'll go straight forward with this one and then yeah i'll just i'll like let that one finish off there and then we'll have this one kind of veer off to that side and then we'll have this one you know veer off to this side as far as we can go because we can't go anymore because of all that stuff in the way so you can see just kind of how it works there um to actually get the train onto the track you can't put it on your hotbar or anything. You have to actually add it to the track like that. So uh, I, I faced it in the wrong direction, but that's okay. We can go forwards and backwards. To use the train, you actually have to uh, put charcoal in. That is the fuel for the train. Um, obviously, gasoline came to mind immediately, but no, you actually have to use charcoal, which makes a little bit more sense uh, in terms of you know what trains actually would have taken uh but yeah it's really cool so we can just hit forward make it go forward and then i don't even have to be driving it anymore it will just go by itself so i could actually hop off completely and it would just keep going obviously it stopped because it hit the end there but um yeah let me let me go ahead and just maybe make that go backwards and then you'll see when we get kind of closer to here we have like this toggle right here so we can choose which direction we want to go in so we're going to switch it to the uh the left hand side and we should go to the left assuming yeah i was thinking maybe it might have something to do with where the train is uh i think maybe i was thinking maybe the left might be that one over there considering this is the front but no it actually it just kind of depends on what direction you're actually going in so yeah we can uh we can have like the splitters work in that direction uh let's, let's go backwards and then let's have it go to the right this time boom so yeah, pretty nice. I like that a lot. I think it's really cool. Obviously, there's a lot of creativity that you could do with this with a massive train. Uh, let me show you the actual carts themselves. The um, the carts are pretty cool. Let me pop it over here a little bit. But let's just add a cart onto it right there. Oop, did I do it? Let's do that right there. So yeah, they are essentially just pulled behind it. And the cart themselves are, um, what are they again? I think they're four by two yeah four by two is the actual size of them and you can go up by three so if you wanted a roof on it uh you should only go up by three and then you can have a flat roof or if you wanted a slope roof you could go up by two and then start sloping up um but yeah it's really cool i like this a lot as well like obviously you can't build on the outside of the actual cart itself um but yeah there's like a decent amount of space in here and you can have multiple carts as well i'll add a bunch of them let me actually just bring this down to the very end over here and then let me can i add them while it's moving maybe you can I don't, oh what the hell oh i just oh i actually didn't know you could do this i didn't realize that you could actually go between that's awesome and then you can also detach the carts as well which is cool uh, let's add another cart there let's just keep adding them yeah i think did i add like five of them i think yeah, we can see. We've got, like, five of them back there. That seems to be the max, because I don't have the option to add any more, and I still have more in my inventory. So five carts is a decent amount. I mean, that's a decently long train, as you can see. Um, yeah, that's awesome. I really like that. And then, obviously, being able to, like, teleport between them, which is something that I've just discovered. Uh, we can choose which cart we want to go to. Let's go to the back one. Boom. Right there. Awesome. That's really cool. I like that a lot. And then, obviously, being able to, like, detach them as well is nice. Uh, let's detach cart so then we'd, we'd essentially leave this one behind then i'm guessing um i would need to make that one go a little bit more forward 
Uh, yeah, I guess I can extend this one sec. So yeah, we'll just drive this forward a bit more. So we should have left one. Yeah, so it's basically just sitting on the track. I don't know if we can like drive backwards and pick it up again or push it or something like that. That might be a thing. Let's see. Yeah, it just stops us in our track. So we might have to then go to this and do add cart. And I'm wondering, did it add that one? It probably did, right? Let's push forward. No, it actually didn't. Huh, that's confusing. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm not really sure what the point of detaching them then would be. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, let me see. Can I reattach? There we go, yeah. So you can just go right back up to it. Um, nice. All right, well, anyway, that is the train. That's just like the surface level of it. Obviously, there's a lot that you could do with it. You can customize it. You can have your carts looking completely different. Um, but another thing that I do want to show you is the Frontier skin, which is obviously just a normal skin like this that you can actually add on to absolutely any normal structure. So I'm turning metal into basically wood right here. It looks like wood, but it is metal itself. Um, doesn't seem like that was weird. It, oh, I guess there's probably like a range or something on it. So you can see right here, we're just basically, it's still metal, but um, obviously it looks like it looks like wood, which is really cool. Let me go back over to this guy over here and I'll just change up some of these structures as well. So yeah, you can see there's like different aesthetics here. Um, absolutely any structure can change. They'll only ever look like this though with the Frontier skin. Um, and then obviously with the other two adventure packs that we're getting for Aberration and then eventually Extinction, we'll have another skin like this that will add in a, a bunch of new variants of structures as well. Um, so yeah, you can see absolutely everything is just stylized in the the kind of like the um, the Western theme that we have going on right here. But um, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, one more thing with this, and that is the Oasisaur. Now, I will not be telling you how to tame this thing in this video, because I'm gonna, probably going to have to figure that out and make a different video about it, but I will show you what you could do with it. Uh, it doesn't have any attacks at all. Um... <laughs> Obviously, it's uh, you know, it's a pretty basic creature. They couldn't have made this thing super OP, but I will say when it's walking, it looks absolutely amazing. I love it so much. So yeah, you can build your houses in the back of it, obviously. Um, let's just like build like a little tiny little shack right here. You know, we could build like a full on big house here as well. This is like the massive area that we have to work with. You can't build right out to the edge there, it seems. Uh, let's see, how much further can I go? Yeah, there's probably like a bit of a barrier there somewhere. Obviously, if the rocks and everything, the trees kind of go away when you start building into them. Um, it looks like I can, looks like I could build there a second ago. Yeah. I guess you can't build all over this whole thing, but um, yeah, let's see how much further. I think that's probably the furthest we can build over in that direction. Yeah, it looks like it. But yeah, in terms of just area, like it's a decent size area and it looks really cool as well. Uh, the actual oasis or naturally just kind of forms resources for you, uh, which should be in here, but they're not. Um, they were earlier. <laughs> I don't know where they went. I don't know anything about this creature, man. Also, um, you can level it, which is pretty cool as well. So one thing that you can see I'm getting right now by just being in these waters is the Gaia's Embrace, which is a little uh, status effect that I am going to have to look into a little bit more. You can see it's making me all glowy and, and like super sane in a certain sense <laughs> i've got like god key on right now it looks amazing um but yeah I'll, I'll definitely go over this creature a lot more in a different video there's probably a huge amount to this guy but i'll just kind of roughly show him off he can fly of course um let's kind of go up here so you hit c to go down x to go up and obviously yeah he looks really really cool and it's massive and it's it's pretty good i think in the air as well um it's not super fast or anything, but it definitely feels a little bit less glitchy than the Desert Titan back on Extinction in uh, Arc Survival Evolved. But obviously we don't know what that's going to be like in this game eventually when we get that. You can kind of like tilt it a little bit when you're turning around and everything. Um, yeah, just in general, it's a, it's a very peaceful looking creature. It's not really going to break the game in terms of like meta or anything like that because... You know, it's not got a crazy amount of health or anything like that. You could definitely kill this thing and everything on top of it would get broken. It can go backwards as well, which is pretty cool. And you can kind of like angle it and go backwards at like uh, an angle and turn around and everything. But um, yeah, just in general, really cool looking creature. Um, definitely is going to need a lot more research done to it uh, for me to fully understand everything that we can do with this guy. But uh, yeah, that's just like the baseline with this dude.
so yeah bit of a messy video because just just so much to show off but uh hopefully you guys did enjoy it um there's a lot of stuff that we're obviously going to be doing and checking out um we've also got the scorch series that's going to be starting up really really soon with all of this stuff as well which is going to be great so i'm super excited for all that guys if you enjoyed this one hit the like button uh subscribe as well and uh yeah i'll catch you in the next one